takes on encouraging a hunger for God. Oops. Okay, the message is, is on encouraging a hunger for God. So, Mike, if you can start on Matthew 5, 6, that would be great. Sure. This is on the King, from the King James Version. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst. Oh, wait a minute. It just looked at me stupid. Okay. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Amen. So I like starting with that because when I encourage, you know, I'm trying to encourage everyone to have hunger for God. It starts for that we have to have a desire for a relationship with him. So I thought that that verse went real good. Um, and I pray every one of you here have a thirst and hunger for God. Um, if you want to share, as I go in between all of them, if you want to share uh, an example of how you were so hungry that you could feel his presence. Because usually when you're hungry, you, you, you just keep praying to make that connection. And it's a beautiful thing when God hears when you cry out to him or talk to him. You know, any form of need or just the relationship, he responds. So, you know, some of us that are spirit-filled know what that means. So, I'm sure, Eddie, you understand. I'm just going to call you out. I'm sure you know, understand what that's like. Oh, yeah, I sure do. Well, did you want me to share something? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's like this here. If you if you just have um, a light hungering for a snack, you generally go to the cupboard and grab some cookies or some potato chips and just snack on a little snack thing or or maybe some crackers and you know stuff like that there. But if you have a real hunger, you're really really hungry. You go you go out to the kitchen, you get out your potatoes, you get out your vegetables, you get out your meat, and you cook a full meal. Because you want to be filled and not stay hungry. What's the same with the with with God? Sometimes we would just have a little bit of a taste. We maybe put on a Christian CD, you know, and listen to some music and get livened up, you know. But when we have a real hunger, we get into the Word of God and we get into prayer and we get filled with the Holy Spirit and we get our, our hunger filled to overflowing. Then, then that's what God wants. Amen. Well, that's part of my example. I'm going to be bringing up. So praise God, confirmation. Um, does anybody else want to share how they've had such a hunger for God and and um, what happened while you were, you know, trying to get in that level of intercession for him? Okay. Going once, <laughs> going twice. <laughs> okay, so this is what I was going to talk about, too. The difference between spiritual and hunger and physical hunger, <clears throat> what I want to bring it up. So physical hunger, the more that you eat, the less hungry that you are. But spiritual hunger, the more that you eat, the hungrier you get. You can never have enough. The more hunger we get, the more <laughs> desire that we have to grow as disciples. So I wanted to give that and. You know, make sure we stay hungry for God. It's very important <laughs> that, you know, through the day, some people think, okay, I'll pray in the morning or at night. But the nice thing about your relationship with God is you can play, pray through the whole day. It doesn't matter where you're at. You can be in the bathroom, the shower, the car. There's always opportunities to pray. And he's always willing to meet you as you reach out and hunger for him. Amen. Amen. So there's also a difference with a believer and a disciple. So as a believer, we have a firm religious faith to take as true or honest. But as a disciple, someone who accepts and exists in spreading the doctrine to another um and Fox, can you give me a read James one twenty two so I can explain a little bit more? Sure. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Amen. So like when you have a hunger for God, you don't want to keep that relationship that's so special to yourself. 
You want everyone to experience the joy, the love, that all that he's done and how much your life has changed because we serve such an awesome God that there's nothing he won't do to help us get there to be a disciple, you know, to help us grow. So that's our goal is being hungry is that we share what we learn and you don't have to be a pastor to share. Amen. You can just on the street as God puts some in your heart, you can plant a seed anywhere you go. And when you depend on the Holy Spirit, he will actually tell you what to say. That it just becomes second nature. That's what I found. I just open my mouth and God does the rest. And I praise him because that's part of my hunger. He knows that I have a desire to share him. And I told him, I'm always going to share you as long as you open my mouth and, and go before me and put the words you would have me say. Because to me, it's important that they're just not my words out of feelings, but that the, the words that... Um, the Holy Spirit is moving through me to say. Yes. So um, I don't know. Um, I know Karen would have an example, but I'm not going to put you on the spot, Karen. I'm going to think of something. But I know that. How does that make you feel when you are an actual disciple and you let the Holy Spirit move through you to reach people? Uh, tell me about, and this is for whoever wants to share. Tell me about like people's reactions, like when you know you're doing it according to the Holy Spirit and doing it in God's will, it will turn out well if you're not impulsive and you're doing it in his order. So does someone have something special they'd like to share as being a disciple? Well, I've noticed a lot of times that uh, if you do that, then if you know, you're know you following God's lead, then he'll give you the words that that person needs. Mm-hmm. Now, that, I mean, a lot of times I've found that out and it's like that's just what they needed to hear. And for, you know, you don't might not even know what the heck they're they're dealing with and, you know, give you the right words to, to tell them and then, wow, and blow their minds. I want to I'm going to share an example because I still laugh about it today when I think about it. I was in a store and this girl was so joyful and I heard some hymns coming out. And so I joined her. I just joined her in hymns. It was really great. We had a great old time. And after that, I said, can I pray for you? And she said, Absolutely. So I went to the car, I got in my car, and then these three girls came chasing me. <laughs> they came chasing me at the car, and they said, are you that girl that was praying in the store? And I said, yes, I am. And they said, will you pray for me? And I said, I sure will. And I said, L I'll get out. Just give me a second. I got out of the car. We started praying, and this one girl goes, and then prophecy came out, because, you know, God works in his way, in his timing. So I started talking and the prophetic came out and then she said, I want what you have. And I said, well, the closer you draw to God and have that personal rela relationship, you can have these gifts. So she mm -hmm. smiled so big. She was so elated and, you know, where's your church? And, <laughs> you know, so we don't realize that we could be soul winners for people in a church setting just by that, just by what we say or the love we show. You know, and it could be simple things. Let's say you're shopping and somebody's short by some and they, 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 oh, put that back. I can't afford this. And I'm saying, no, 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 no. You could do something like that to bless them and say, uh, I'll take care of that. Just leave it with my stuff. And something like that is, is a blessing. You know what I'm saying? So there are always opportunities, whether, and you don't have to give financially all the time, but if you have it, it's wonderful too. But if you give of your time, if you give of your love, if you give a, a helpful ear to listen, you know, those things go a long way. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and if anybody Karen, wants to say anything, please raise thank you. Good. I'd, I'd like to go back to what we were talking about a few seconds ago. Um, I, uh, I've been down in the ICU for two days since after the procedure. And uh, I just came up and somebody came on shift because it's shift change right now. And uh, she's like, you told me a couple of days, a few days ago that you'd pray for me. She's like, I remember you. She's like, thank you so much for the prayers. So, you know, that was just, again, confirmation that that she needed that. And I was there to to pray for her and to to reach out to her. And yeah, that's it's nice to have somebody say that back. Amen. Yeah, we can be a lot of examples or I've had people say you're different. Well, what's so different about you? I just 
I notice something I don't see in people. And I'm like, honey, you're seeing the love of the Lord, you know? <laughs> so it's a good opportunity to get out there. I'm like, do you have something you would like to be, you know, to for me to pray for? And I tell you, my biggest praying area is, my, is the hospital. Because I figure if I got to spend time there, I'm going to make good of it, you know? So... I really enjoy it. I mean, next thing you know, I've got people in groups holding hands, praying in my room. And that is such an off, awesome feeling because no matter how sick you are, it lifts up your spirit and all those around you. You know, mm -hmm. so it's a blessing. And Patty, too, don't be shy. You know, you can open up if you have anything you'd like to add. So I, I'd like to add, Joanne, that um, while we're waiting for Patty, there is that like the scripture says that we need to be. Not just hearer of the word, but doers of the word. When we hear the word of God, we read the word of God, we study the word of God, we need to apply it to our lives daily as we live. Yes. Just to be instant in season, out of season. And it also tells us, we also know that actions speak louder than words. Amen. You know, and when we need to be a living example, and they say that we, they will know we are Christians by our love. love. And like I always say, and I'll say it till the day I die. The only Bible that the world out there may ever read is what they read in you and me. We need to be that living testimony. Amen. Okay, I mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Um, but, you know, when you carry God's love, I'm not talking about our love. When you carry God's love inside of you, people will notice. Yep. They'll notice something different. They can't put their finger on it. And I love it when they ask. You know, because somebody, I went, I was at Massachusetts one time, and it's like, you're different. You don't, you're not from here. I'm like, I don't have that Boston accent. And they're, they're like, no, I mean, you're different. And so I was like, I ended up using that as a testimony. You know what I mean? So uh, it's important as disciples to let God's sh light shine on us. It's not about us, but that people will see God on our countenance. It's very important. And they'll know if you've been prayed up. They'll know if you've been fasting because you can't hide God's glory. Amen. You just can't. Now, Patty, do you have something to add? <laughs> no, I was just agreeing. You can't hide from God's glory because, you know, it shines through you. Um, when you start doing the things, you know, like if you're starting to memorize the scripture or something and you're actually memorizing it and you're actually living the word. Mm -hmm. And it shows through you. It doesn't have to be out in the world. It can be just with your family. And your own family can notice it. And Amen. It just, yeah, and that can make your family want to make changes. Yeah. That's the beautiful part. They're like, wow, like, I know that when I was going through cancer, exactly. it was such yeah. a testimony. Because people would just, you know, they always had comments to make. And it was always an area where I brought God. I said I wouldn't be strong on my own strength. Mm -hmm. Always that is a testimony and how God loves us so mm -hmm. much that he wants to strengthen us. We just have to ask. Amen. Yeah. We forget to ask sometimes, <laughs> you know, I mean, God wants to bless. That's the nice thing about God's blessings is when you ask for something that you need, not just because you're, you know, something in his, in his will. If you ask something that you need, he always gives you extra. I think that is so awesome. It just overpours the blessing more than you can imagine. That's his love for us. And Kathy, you know, I'm not going to put you on the spot, but please raise your hand anytime you'd like to talk. Okay. So, um, so now I'm going to talk about why we should encourage a hunger for God. Only God can fill a spiritual void and give true peace, satisfy um, our spiritual needs and desires. And I do have an example, and I'll let you guys think of it, too. Um, one day I felt really empty and sad and lonely. And this was a long time ago. I was just couldn't handle it. I was like, I just wanted to cry and cry. And I was like, Oh Lord, I don't know what's wrong, but this is really real. This is the way I feel. Um, and he, <laughs> he told me something. And ever since then, I realized to always be radical and do the opposite of how you feel because God has it in his plans. So he said, call everyone you appreciate and tell them today. And I was like, oh, I got a good list. Okay, I can handle that. So the more I was pouring to others while I was going through this, the more God poured back into me. And by the end of my phone calls, I and I was on there for a while, let me tell you. But by the end of my phone calls, all of that was gone because 
I felt his love and peace that I had a purpose that I didn't realize that something simple like that made a difference. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm really good about continuing to practice that. It was a valuable lesson. I'm always checking on people. How you doing? I miss you. You know, I try to do that when they're, you're not here. And, you know, I tell, I tell the people that talk to me pretty regular. I'm like, I love you. I, you know, I pray for them when we're talking and, you know, we may not even always have all the answers, you know, but whatever answer we have, we give with love and we check with God. But just having an ear available sometimes is enough for what they need. Amen. You always encourage me when you do that for me. Out of the clear blue, you'll just write me and say, I'm praying for you or I'm thinking of you. You'll you'll do a video chat with me out of nowhere. And I look and you're calling me and it's just, I needed that at the moment. So that's truly um, flowing with God because when you do that, and a lot of you have done that with me before, that's when you really need it. And you'd be surprised most of the time that person is in the, down in the dumps and they need to hear from you. And it doesn't matter what position they hold, they're still people and they still have feelings and emotions. And when God directs you to contact a person, do it. Because I'm telling you, it works. It's very important. So thank you for that. Yeah, one time I was actually falling asleep on the phone and I said, oh, my goodness, I'm so sorry. Like, I don't want to be rude. I'm hearing you, but I'm a little tired. Can we chat again some more tomorrow? <laughs> and she's like, sure. And then she surprised me and came over and we're going to talk about blessings when you're in this will. She brought me some um, Greek food and she got a dress for Leona to cheer me up. And then she left with a prayer. And I was like, you know, see this is not why we do things. We do things because we love others, but God will bless you back. And you can see little things like this is his touch and his love in it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes and, and we forget to thank God when we're going through things. We forgot to thank him. Like, thanks for another day of life. Like when you wake up, thank you that my feet are touching the floor today, you know, and yes. thank you, Lord, that you're finding favor. Thank you. I got food on the table. I mean, they could be small things. But well, we really should be thankful for these small things because some people say God doesn't do miracles. And I'm like, what do you mean? I said, you know, if we don't see the little miracles. How are we going to see the big ones? You're alive. You've eaten today, you know. So he, their life itself is really a miracle every day. Amen. So. Karen Hatcherham. What's that? Karen Hatcherham. Um, oh, good, because I can't see. I can't see on my side. Oh, well, thank you, Eddie. <laughs> Pastor Eddie. Um, I always say to the Lord, whether it's a good day or a bad day, I praise you. Whether I'm going through good times or bad times, I praise you. Because God does not waver. You know, and, and neither should we. We mm -hmm. shouldn't waver whether we're going through a bad day. You know, because God deserves our love and respect either way. Just because we're going through a hard time doesn't mean that we should you know, start ranting and raving and, and carrying on, you know, even though it's really hard, the things that we have to go through, um, just still got, God still gets the glory. Amen. I'm going to say this with love and it might be comical. I don't mind when y'all call and rant and rave because you get things off your chest and you feel better and then we can laugh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because I would prefer someone to call me. I'm sorry to bother you people. Poor Patty. She's real good for that. I'm, I'm sorry to bother you. You don't bother me, honey. And um, we start talking and then she laughs and, you know, then she can end up with the rest of her day just because we all need to purge. And sometimes we need somebody. Not that we don't need God, but always turn to someone spiritual filled, someone who's hungry for God, someone who has a personal relationship that's close because we want people in our life to bring us closer to God and not pull us away. Amen. Yes, Eddie. There's a difference between having a spirit, the spirit of God in your life and moving in the spirit of God yes. in your life. It's like having a plate of food in front of you and not eating it. It doesn't do you much of any good, but looks good, but doesn't do much good until you take and taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. It's like when our cup is only filled to the half full or just to the brim, it only benefits ourselves. 
But when it's overflowing, that's why God says, I'll fill you up to overflowing. When it overflows, it reaches out to other people. That glass flows over, it can fill other Amen. glass. Yeah. And it refills you. That's right. the nice Everybody. thing. When you pour into others, not only does it overfill their cup, but God overfills you so you could continue to be in his will and do his work. You know, mm -hmm. it's such a blessing. It's just, it goes both ways. You know, God, God is a rewarder of those that seek him. That's why I'm encouraging to be hungry for him. But an encourager of people who are disciples that, you know, do his will. Amen. Yeah. So. We were all created to be in a relationship with our creator. So he wants us to come to him. He's actually as hungry for us to come to him as we are as needing him in our life. And I think that is beautiful because I know when I go to daddy, I call him my daddy. He's personal. When I go to daddy and I um, talk what's in my heart and stuff like that, I know he hears. I know he cares, you know, and I feel his love, too. And even when he disciplines me, I can't explain it. I like being disciplined by daddy because he does it with a love and a tone. Like, I know God talks to everybody as they need to be heard. And I'm kind of more the sensitive person. So God comes to me with that kind of love that, that when he disciplines me, I'm excited to hear it. Because he does it in a way that touches me that's so kind and loving. And that's what I want to share with you guys when you come to me. I want you to see that. I don't want you to see me. I want you to see dad working through me. You know, I want to be that example. You know, when I and the reason I personally and say daddy, because that's what he is to me. That's what I feel like. You know, I, I thank God that he let, let me realize that I don't have to be so personal that I can call him that. Amen. Mm -hmm. So everybody's relationship is different, personal and what you call him. You know, you call him. But, you know, he knows what's in your heart. The main thing is to continue that relationship you know because when we let it go one day and oh i didn't pray or talk i'll catch it tomorrow then you find that that slacking becomes a lot easier so it's just better to form it as a habit yes eddie you're so right there uh joanne because even in the bible it tells us that we call him abba father so he is our father. So we can call him daddy. We can call him our father. And and he's there for us as a father, you know, to mm -hmm. love and nourish and to take care of us. If he could provide for the birds of the air, how much more would he do it for his children, right? And that's what he tells us. He, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. We, we have need for nothing because our father provides everything that we need. Well, Maybe. I've had friends laugh because they've heard me talk and I said, you know, I'll be like, Daddy G's in the house. I'm like, oh, I love my Big Gipper because he made the stars. <laughs> so I have like little pet names for God because of that personal relationship. Yeah. And I, I feel the love when I talk to him like that. And, and I he receives it so well. Like, you know, not that we don't have that reverence and respect for him, but he wants us to have that closeness. Well, even when Jesus taught us how to pray, he said, our father who art in heaven. That's how he started it. Yeah. Uh, you know, even he considered, you know, left it for us to call him our father. I shared right. some of this with with uh, Karen and she's laughed with the bad daddy G or the big gipper. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, you know, he's just that real to me. And that that's what I pray that this lesson will help you feel that realness and closeness with God, because he really wants that. He desires that. God is the only way to salvation and eternal life. So it's like, no matter what you try, nothing's going to fulfill that. But our daddy, amen, nothing will fulfill that. So Fox, would you like to read Acts 4.12, please? Uh, yeah, let me get my computer going again here. Okay. Acts 4.12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. Doesn't that encourage you to keep your hunger alive? You know, like nobody else could have saved us. Nobody else can, you know, fix us. Nobody else can be patient with us sometimes. <laughs> like, you know, and it's. I wake up and I said, you know, God, I have such a desire to be more like you. I like, cru crucify my flesh daily. 
let me be dead to myself and alive in you. Because I know sometimes emotions could be a deadly thing as far as helping, encouraging people grow. We have to be real careful, you know. So, you know, I have to be prayed up a lot. You know, even when you all reach me, like, you know, I'm prayed up because I want you to have the best of me as far as God moving in me that you can have. And I do it through love. And and some people, like, you know, I don't think you mind, Patty, if I use this example. Like, you've been kind of upset before. And the first thing I say when you say, forgive me, I said, I already have. I love you, girl. You know what I'm saying? And something like that, she just, you know, it, it, it's a little thing to say. But, you know, she has this relief that comes off of her. And there's nothing more beautiful than that. You know? So I do use people's examples because y'all mean a lot to me, too. And I love that you come to me. I love being there for you. You know what I'm saying? Because that's my heart is to be able to be for people in need. You know, that's where my heart is. I enjoy that. It's natural for me. Plus, I have ability to gab for a reason, you know. So I might as well use it for good. <laughs> okay. Um. Did I give you, no, I think I gave you facts, Acts 4.12 already. Yeah. So we should encourage a hunger for our God because of the blessings that he wants to give us in this life. But it's more, more beyond that. You know, that was a side note, but I want it to be more than don't seek the blessings. Because one time, I mean, he will do that automatically, when as will. But I, I prayed one time to God. And I even asked him, hey, can you help me pray more effectively for people? You know, how would you like to hear me pray? Like, I get, like, personal with him. And he said, you know what, Joanne? Don't seek my healing hands. Seek my face. Now, I don't know about mm -hmm. you. I do pray for the healing and everything. But what he's trying to say is the most important thing is your relationship. Because all that will come. You don't have to worry. And he gave me a sense of peace. That as long as I'm seeking that relationship, you know, as long as we take time to just listen to God, because we talk a lot to God, but we need to listen. And that's how we grow and help others. Amen. So I love to seek his face now. It, it's such a different place he took me with that. I loved it. Those words were so powerful to me. So I'm grateful that he said those because it had a big impact. And that's another thing. When you're real close to daddy, like I'm calling him. And he tells you things. You take it with so much love. Like every day I'm thrilled like an amusement park. When I hear something new that he shares with me, I get so excited. It's almost like you're having candy, you know, <laughs> for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I get so excited. I never lost that freshness when he reveals things to me. And that's part of being hungry. I want to encourage you not to you lose that freshness, you know, that he has. Um. We will receive everything else as long as we're, you know, in his will. And this is in Matthew 6, 33. It's going to explain that. Can you read that, Fox? Yep. Get like Timu out of the way. Okay, there we go. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. So, you know, when we're seeking his kingdom, it's not about us, is it? You know, we're just seeking his will. And and I love one of the, the things that really stuck to me. It was a simple thing in the Bible. It said, I came to do the will of my father when Jesus said that. Mm -hmm. And I always look back at that and I say, when I wake up, I said, God, what you want me to do to be in your will today? You know, I said, arrange my day. I get behind in a lot of things, but he gave me a heart for people. So I'm glad that he uses me that way, that people can feel free to come to me, you know. And, you know, they're going to get the love. They're going to get the vice. They're going to get truth. And they may even get giggles. But, you know, I just let God work. And I just not only God is showing the love, but I sincerely love you all because God first loved me that I have that love. You know what I mean? So that's. It's wonderful. How could you not love somebody when you experience God's love? You know, it's impossible. Do you want to share anything, Karen? Um, yeah. I I love how 
hold on. I love God's will for my life. I mean, I, I, you know, we all get into the flesh. We all, you know, sometimes get too busy and, and we want to do things our way. But at the end of the day, I really love when, when God is like, when I know God is pleased with me because I followed his instructions, because I followed his commandments, I followed his lead. And that makes it just me so happy when I'm following God and what he wants me to do for my life, not what I want to do for my life, but what God wants me to do. And that just it makes you feel so good inside. It makes you just want to please the Lord more and more. And at first, when you when you come to the Lord, it's hard to separate your flesh from the spirit. But with God's help, it can be done. And yeah. I, I just, I love to please the Lord. Amen. And, you know, I really, you know, I'm proud of you, Karen. I try to tell, when I see something God's working, I tell people I'm proud of them. Because it encourages me when I see God's working through people. And I've seen Karen grow so much. I'm just so excited to see her growth. You know, how she takes time and listens to God and it's so beautiful because it's so important that we realize that we need to slow down and not we, we need to pay attention to what he's saying it's really really important that we don't try to talk to people without being in his will you know and seek his advice seek his words you know so I'm really excited Karen I just I praise God for you too <laughs> Amen. Eddie, watch it. What's that? Eddie's trying to flag it down. Oh, please say something. It, it, it's so true as Karen was touching on. And the scripture tells us clearly, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things shall be added unto you. When we don't seek for ourselves, but we seek his will. We seek his desire. We seek what the Lord wants us to do this day or who he wants us to minister to through the spirit. And he guides us through the spirit, you know, who to minister to. That That's so important that we seek God first in everything that we do. And then all the rest will be added onto us. No, no, Heal, no, don't mess with it now. Clean, deliver, salvation, souls being saved will be added onto us if we seek him first. Amen. Amen. Well, I got another verse to go with that. Mike, are you there? You came uh, out here. I want to make sure. <laughs> I was just ready to ask you to read another one on that same subject about right. seeking his will and his lead. Um, so that will be James 4, 7. Okay, James 4, 7. This is says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Amen. So that's another good verse to talk about submission. You know, we don't need the enemy will do his best to get under our skin. Just like tonight, he tried to get this to not work. And, you know, um, and then he wore me out with with uh, deliverance. It's like I, and I have to get wisdom to say, God, show me how to slow down and rest because I'm not very good at that. <laughs> I'm great at praying all night and then because I can't sleep. And then he's like, well, why don't you? It's OK to lay down and sleep, Joanne. <laughs> Because I pray so much to God, you know, I'm, I'm enthused. I just, I have such enthusiasm, not just the hunger, but I'm so enthusiastic for God. Like, I feel like I can't get enough of him. You know, he's better than the best chocolate bar you can ever imagine. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> well, it's good to have a longing to share the good news with everyone. A willingness to share the gospel. And I love that too because that comes in handy like when we do have our, when I do um, kind of like counseling and people ask me things. I go to the word. I make sure I always give them a piece of the word or and I pray. You know what I mean? And I that's the best thing that really works, you guys. Is That's the part we learn need to slow down. Like we can listen but it's very important to hear what he has for that person. That'll give you the right words that'll touch their heart. You know, I mean, 
Patty, it's, it's amazing because you used to be so shy. But around me, you're not shy, girl. You're not shy. You know, because you've seen, it's not me. I'm not giving myself credit. It's just that you've seen God love me and you see you could let your hair down and it's okay. You know what I mean? That I love you for your quirkiness. I love you for a bad day. Like, none of it matters. You know? There you go. I'm getting her shy, but it's cute. No, you, you brought it out in me, Miss Joy. And that's for really sure. <laughs> yeah, so you, you know. really quiet, but I think it's because we also knew that we had the common for loving the Lord. And that's that's another thing. We all have that in common with loving the Lord. And that's, it shows in our countenance. And that's how come we're drawn to each other is because we we love the Lord so much and that shows. Amen. So thank you. Amen. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, and go ahead. I, I want to give dibs out to um Sheila. She's such a blessing too. When she's Amen. on these uh, reading the word of God, she reads it with such an anointing and such a power and such a love behind her, her voice that Amen. it, it great blessing and it helps to bring the word alive to us when we hear it and and she's such a blessing and i want to i want to give dibs yeah. for dibs do yeah i mean everybody has their part here i might pick out certain people's because the ones that reach out to me the most that i've got to really know like i i joke with them i said we blood <laughs> You know, so once you're in that court where you we're already family, but the more you know about each other, the more you can pour yourself out and know who we are. You know what I'm saying? And I never anybody that wants to reach me, I'm like, anytime, just, you know, you know where to find me in messenger and, you know, call whatever, you know, because I, I would make myself available, whether it comes to prayer or anything, just listening. Sometimes that's all we need to do is listen. Oh, it's just a, about jo Joanne when I first met her. Well, after I've had knew her for a long time, it's like uh, Joanne is the original Chatty Kathy doll that somebody broke the string on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny you said that because my teachers, when I was going to school, would always set me up with the shy ones, and at the end of the year, they couldn't get them to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> and Patty's shaking her head yes because she's on a roll. <laughs> you're on the roll. You're on the rock that doesn't roll. That's what it is. <laughs> no, it's true. Amen. Oh, it's true. It is. It's true. <laughs> I just, I'm a type of person that I can find good in everybody. On your worst day, I can find good in everybody, and I like to encourage seeing that, you know, because y'all, all of you here. Bless me differently. Honestly, y'all bless me in a different way. And um, it's important as brothers and sisters in Christ that we remain close. We need each other. We need to be praying for each other. It's very important. Even the ones that don't come to me, I am praying for you all. I really am. I take things to the Lord and I love seeing everybody grow. And it, it encourages me just like Eddie talks about it, you know. You encourage me, Eddie. You know, you make me want to do better. And, you know, and Patty encourages me. You know, you all encourage me. There she goes being goofy. See, I love that. And then she's being real. And then, you know, Karen, you you, you encourage me a lot, too. Good. I know I can come to you guys like you come to me. And that's important. Yeah. Amen. It's very important. Yeah. So, Sheila, I don't know as much. But when you're working, I see it. I get excited. I still don't know some of you too well. We don't talk as much, but let you know that my uh, my messenger or calls are always welcome. Feel free to reach out because I love y'all. Whether we talk or um, not, I, I really love y'all. I just wanted to say, too, that I'm blessed and encouraged by each and every one of you, too. Um, I get to know you through Bible studies and through chat. On Sunday when everyone's talking, I don't get to know you too well, uh, you know, personally messaging. I'm not much of a, a texter. I do vendor events and I'm texting a lot. And so I'm sorry if I'm not too present in the, the ministry chat, but I'm just not much of a texter. Mm -hmm. But I do enjoy each and every one of you. And I have to say, when I am reading the scripture on Sunday, I get blessed just as much as anyone else gets blessed. And I take all of the scripture verses 
to my own heart. Amen. And I'm glad that I'm able to be there to bless all of you uh, with the, the word, the scripture words. It's beautiful because we can never get much of too much of the word. I could read something over and over again. And then one day it clicks. Wow. I've read this before. This That's is amazing. Right. <laughs> or you read something new that you, um, you're like, Oh, I, I don't remember reading this. Like since I was a teenager or in my early twenties, I haven't heard this verse in a long time or this is new. How come I didn't, read this before you know i love the word of god i never get tired of the word of god there everything you need in your life is in that manual <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely a blueprint print of our life i just i Amen. i have a hunger for his word just as much as the relationship because Amen. you know you see me i come to life and i act like a little kid in a candy store but that's the way i am with god <laughs> i laugh with god I'm like, did you believe I did that, God? <laughs> or something, you know. I laugh with him, you know, and he's as real to me in my home talking to him. And I know some people make a prayer room and they go to a room. I can't do that. I gotta pray around the whole house. That's just my style. But <laughs> you know, I do have quiet time. But yeah, I get excited. Go ahead, Eddie. Yeah, the Bible is our roadmap to life. Yep. <laughs> And, and it, it's our guide. And not only that, I look at it every time I read the word of God, and read the scripture, put it in my life. That's the thumbprint of God in my life. You know how on your phone, sometimes you can set it so that when you need to get in your phone, you have to use your thumbprint to get in, to activate it. I won't it. do that. That's part of the new world order. But we won't get into that. Go ahead. <laughs> it's on your phone, but it's saying yeah. <laughs> to activate God, we need his thumbprint in our lives. We have his fingerprints all over our lives and all over our heart and our life as we read the word of God and we pass the word of God to other people. We're leaving the thumbprint and the fingerprints of Jesus all over other people. You touch a plate, you touch a door and a handle, you touch a light switch, you're, you're leaving your thumbprint, your fingerprints all over everything, your DNA. Well, God has got his DNA in our lives through the word of God. And we are able to share that with other people and lead the print of God as we go. Amen. You and I are good at tag teaming. I, I, I need to work with you again, Eddie. I miss that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so <laughs> not off subject there, but that's just showing how you appreciate each other. You know, it's, you mesh good. We mesh good with each other and that's a blessing. We should, you know, we're a child of God. And I'm glad that you can still hear Mary. She said she's not on here, but she can hear. So I praise God for you, Miriam. She's very good at sending prayers um, to you when you need them. Mm -hmm. And I praise God for that. So, oh, all, all these beautiful faces I'm not seeing, but I see your, I can feel your spirit, you know, the connection here. It's beautiful. So, um, well, part of being hungry is that we do have um, the good news that we can share with everybody. You know, you have that willingness when you're hungry. That's why I want to talk about the subject so much. These things come natural as the Holy Spirit works through you and you have that excitement. I tell you what, I just, my life is a wonderful carnival with God. <laughs> with good times or bad, I just am so I'm going to be real. I'm stoked to be in his presence. So it will make it easy for you to want to share with everybody. Like, how could you not share the goodness of God and what he's done in your life? Like, even if you're shy, a little thought could come and it could be used at the right time. Praise God. Mm -hmm. All of us here can be used in God in a mighty way. All of us. And we all can be in good encouragers. And it doesn't take a lot, does it, Eddie? It doesn't nope. take a lot to encourage people. It's just, you know. Love. That's all it is, is pure love. And there's, it's like I, you know, when I counsel people, I don't judge. They could come to me about anything. Because who are we to judge? We can't. That's God's job. But if we have love, we can overcome them. I mean, a lot. We can come a long way, miles and miles of things we can overcome with each other with patience and love. I believe that. Honestly, I do. Because people want to come to you. 
when you're loving, they want to come to you. They want to, and then they actually want to fix themselves. And then you want to fix yourself so that they can fix themselves and we could be examples to each other. So it's just, it's beautiful, you know? So I don't just speak of it. I, I, I try to be there for everybody that, you know, like they're welcome to come and that's okay that your, your style is different. Sheila, you're still very important to all of us, you know? <clears throat> Patty had her hand. Who has her hand up? Patty. Okay. Timothy, Timothy had his Timothy. hand up. I, was yeah, I cannot hand. see Timothy. Please speak. Sorry. Yes, Let me say a very big hi to everyone. It's been a while hi. that we. Yeah, it's been a while that uh, we we are together like this uh, from my end. I think there has been some challenges in our electricity and stuff like that. That's how it comes. I've not been able to join you guys. But I'm grateful and glad I'm here today. Hey, man. I'm, I'm glad yes. that you're here, and it's good to hear your voice. Good. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I have followed the Bible quotations and the scriptures and everything that you brought in there. So you, let me just uh, summarize what I understood and everything. So, um. As Eddie, Pastor Eddie said, that seek ye the kingdom of God first, and everything shall be added unto you. I realize all of us who are here, we have one way or the other, seek the kingdom of God first. And that is how it comes. I can hear um, Sister Joanne advise me about the word of God. I can hear Mother Debbie speak to me about the word of God. If I had not looked for where the word of God is, I wouldn't have this blessing. Mm -hmm. Same way if you seek the kingdom of God first, at the end of the day, whether you are sick, you're going to be healed. Mm -hmm. If you have any challenges, you're going to be healed. Because the Bible says, by his stripes, we are healed. I love that because we are healed. the name of Jesus are. Christ, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess mm -hmm. that he is the Lord. So I'm grateful, and I'm glad that all of us, as we speak, this is a Bible teaching church, and I'm glad to be part of it. God bless us all. I'm grateful. Amen. Well, thank you for coming, and because everybody is so important here, and we miss each other. I know I miss I miss you guys when you're not joining, you know, so this is a blessing whether I see you or hear you either way. It's such a blessing to me and you do bless me. Y'all bless me a lot. Um, let's see where I'm at now. Okay. Uh, I, another. Oh, go ahead. I know. Just a meeting. Because I can make it without food. And your stomach starts to grumble and starts to growl. And sometimes you get a little stomach pain because you need that nourishment. And that's what I find. If I don't make it out for the, the, to hear the word of God, it makes me more hungry the next day in, or to, you know, the recording of it and go on and listen to it because I, I hunger so much after God and his righteousness, you know. And as long as we seek the Lord, he shall be found. But we have to seek after him, you know. Um and, and it's great because when we, we, we seek him and, and we do what he wants us to do and we're within his will, he pours out his blessings and his blessings are so wonderful. And I thank God for that because his blessings are overflowing. Yeah. Yeah. Our message is picking up a lot and I like to see how it's touching you and it touches me, too, because when I re read over it, it's just, you know, it's inspiring me, you know, and. You know, I I have such a hunger for him, and I, I pray that this will help you guys because the hunger we get, like you said, the thing with God, though, is that the more we have of him, the hungrier we get of him because we've noticed it's like the word of God says, taste and know that he is good. So the more we have of him in our life, the more desire we have. Like for me, my desire is to please him. And if I think I've done anything to not please him, I, I oh, man, I'm harder on myself than God can be. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry if I did something wrong, you know, because I have that desire to keep God happy. I do because he's done. 
I mean, they've done, he's done the ultimate. There's no greater love than that. So it's like, I, I want to give my best. I don't want to give God crumbs because he doesn't give us crumbs. He gives his best. So it's a good example of, of how to check ourselves, you know, and I try to check myself. It's really important that we check ourselves once in a while. <laughs> so Every day I'm great for Jesus. <laughs> what's that? Every day I want to be a great for Jesus. Connected great... to the and... <laughs> and... <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Yeah, I do. I want to, I just want him to say, look down at me and say, child, I am proud. You know, I'm proud. That's what I, my desire is. I may fa fail with other areas of my life, but I, you know, and I say, God, help me to get better. Get me always on track. But the main thing is to please father. Night, what's, what's that? That was I back couldn't... chat. Sorry. That was back chat in the hallway here. Oh, um, I thought someone was commenting. Um, but I do want to say that it's important to keep yourself accountable and yes. for yourself uh, everyday inventory on on how you're you're doing and how you're pleasing the Lord. And do you spend most of your day pleasing yourself? Do you spend most of the day pleasing the Lord? Do you balance it out? Um, it's you really and I always say, Lord. Please humble me. Keep me humble, Lord. You know, I said, I don't I don't ever want to boast. I don't ever want to get proud, puffed no. up, arrogant. So, you know, like, I'm not perfect. Nobody is. But I always, you know, say to the Lord, just keep me right where you want to be. And um, I, I love the Lord. I'm so glad that he, that he chose me to change my life for the better. That's why I like yeah. to be able to come to you. Because I, I know you'll be honest. I'll say, Karen, I need to check myself. What do you think? <laughs> and it's nice that we could do that for each other. We need that. We do, you know, without judgment. But, she'll, you know, when you say it with love, then you're like, okay, these are areas I can work, you know. And I'd rather know when someone just say it like that. And she always says it with so much love than to be making a mistake I'm not aware of. I always say, God, forgive me for the sins I know of and the sins I don't know of. Because the ones you don't know of worry me a lot. Because you can fix things. But if you don't know, I'm like, bring it to my attention. Because that's harder to fix. Yes, Patty? I don't mean to keep cutting in. But no, I anytime. Just, it prompted that um, when you check yourself because your actions speak louder than words. And it can really hurt somebody. And you have to really check yourself every day. And the main goal of the rule is, you know, what would Christ do, you know, and that's what I try to think of. And it's hard sometimes because the flesh wants to take over and you want to go with the moment. But you got to learn not to go with the moment and go with what God wants you to do. And that's the lesson that I've had to learn is to try to go with what God wants me to do and not what my flesh wants to do. And it's hard sometimes because we live in this world and we live in a place where... We feel like we're alone or we don't have anybody, but God is always there and he always gives us the direction that we need to have in our lives and that he gives us the clarity that we can continue as long as we got people who will have our backs and have our and be by our side. Like each and every one of you will be by our side. And as long as that is attainable, then we can move forward with the love of God. And that's how we can progress in this world. And we don't need to lean to the world because the world's the messed up place. And it's going to get worse before it gets any better before Christ comes. And Amen. I can't wait for that day before he comes again. And we need to stay away from the people that are not helping us or not standing to have our backs. And the Lord is the one who has our back. He has, he has good intentions for us as well as each and every one of us here has intent, good intentions for each and every one of us. And that's what we need to lean towards. And we need to lean towards him a lot more and have that faith that can move mountains. And I just wanted to end with that. <laughs> Amen. Well, if you ever do feel that loneliness that you were talking about, just reject and renounce that from Satan because that's a lie. You know you got people here that love you that are here for you. Pastor Debbie has her hand up. Yes, Hi. <laughs> I haven't been saying much of anything. I've just been 
watching, observing. I had the camera off for a little bit because I had to do a couple things, but I was here listening. And I just want to tell you that my heart is so touched and so blessed by each one of you. Uh, Joanne, your love and your teaching tonight is wonderful. Uh, Eddie, all the things you said to pitch in on that teaching was amazing. Everybody else who's giving their input, some of you who are just watching, but I'm watching your faces as the word of God is being ministered. Some of you ha have it blocked out and I can't see your faces, but I know your hearts. And as the spiritual mother, see, I'm not just a pastor. I'm like a spiritual mother to all of you. You may not realize that, but I am. I pray for you like I pray for my children. And, you know, I probably am the oldest person here. <laughs> but anyway, putting that aside, um, I love you all. And as I watch you interact with each other, it's like joy to my heart. It's joy. To, and I know that if it's joy to my heart, what is it to God's heart? Ooh. When he sees his children interacting, loving one another, absorbing his word, taking it in and like the saying is eating his word, like loving his word and loving him and sharing your love one with another. It's amazing. I couldn't ask for more. So I just wanted to tell you, I am I know we're not supposed to have pride, but I'm very proud of each and every one of you in your walk with God and um, and your love for one another. And the word tells us, I believe Eddie just said that, that you know, they, they'll know us by our fruit. And anyone that's new that comes in here feels the love of God. They understand the love of God. Jenny Lynn came on one time and now she comes all the time because she hears the yeah. true word of and she knows the word of God is being ministered. I just want you to know that um, I thank God for you, for each and every one of you, all of you on here. And that's it. That's what I got to say. Thank you, Pastor. We appreciate you too. Go ahead, Mike. Oh, I just I was just agreeing. Okay. Well, you're, you're, no, I know you're reading, but if you want to add, you can. Yes, Eddie, I caught it. Side up, side I, I, I just want to say that I am so excited, more than proud, but I'm so excited and ecstatic to be part of this ministry, to be under the umbrella of yeah. Pastor Debbie. Yeah. You know, she's a wonderful pastor. She is a mother to us all. She is a real blessing. And if we need correcting, she corrects us. If we're out of place, she lets us know right away in love. And I thank God for that. And the important thing is like, you know, with being fruitful, you know, we, we need to remain fruitful. And I thank God for that because it's so important that we seek God first in everything that we do. That's so important. That's about the hunger. Jesus said he is the bread of life and they that, Eat of this bread, she, she'll not hunger no more. And he's a living water. The water that flows, unconditionally flows all the time. And he said, if you drink of this water, you'll thirst no more. And when we take communion and he breaks the bread, it represents the breaking of his body for us. For us, because he loved us. And the blood that poured out of his body was to help heal us and save us and sanctify us and I thank God and cleanse us. And I thank God for that. Everything that he does from the water, from the blood and the bread, the breaking of the bread, what he's done for us on the cross and everything. He did it because he loves us. And we need to share that love with one another to one another and with other people. And it doesn't matter if you've made mistakes. It doesn't matter yeah. if you've Lord and you've fallen away from God, but you've come back to the Lord. God wants his spirit to fill you, each and every one of us. And if we seek God, he will fill us with his spirit. Come back to holiness and God will use you in the ministry again. God, Because the Bible says that the, 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 the calling of the Lord on your life, the calling and the gifts are without repentance. Amen. He doesn't 
from you. It's still there. It may be on the back burner, but it's still there. And when you give your life, you start seeking God again, he'll refill you with that spirit that you need and the ministry that he's given to you. And come to the Lord and share what God has given to you and how God has changed your life again. And I thank God for that. We need and, to encourage one another. Amen. And another thing we got to think about is we need to still keep that that righteous fear of the Lord. It's not like you're scared like that, but you have a fear of of walking wrong in his presence. It's like a holy, you know, you know, when you put yourself with everything you got humbly to him, faults and everything. It's good that we have that um, that fear of the Lord to to walk righteously. Like you were talking about, but we need to, the fear of it is just as important as loving and wanting to be disciples and all that. That's is, you know, like I said, to keep checking ourselves because how can we give to others and teach them if we're not practicing what we're teaching others? It's very important. Amen. Because people know if you're sincere or not, you know. I, I believe the scripture you're looking for, Joanne, is that it says in the Bible that. Uh, we're to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling mm -hmm. that we live with God. Uh, it, you know, it even says on there, it, for, it, it'd be better for us to have a millstone tied around our neck and be cast in the sea than to make the least of one of these stumble and fall. We're not to make, you know, we're not to put everybody down and each other down and talk gossip about each other. We're to encourage yeah. one another. If we cause somebody mm -hmm. to fall to God, that's on mm -hmm. us. And there is a verse in the Bible that says, uh, for it would have been better for them not to know in the way of righteousness and after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. It mm -hmm. says that we should be hot or cold. We're not to be lukewarm. And there's so many scriptures that tells us we need to check ourselves daily. And that's a part about seeking God first. We do that and the Holy Spirit will bring to us what we need to change. Amen. And I've always had a soft spot, a spot for people they call the underdog. The ones that feel like they've been beat up or the ones that feel like they're lonely or people are not understood. I've always had a heart for people like that, you know, because I understand how they feel. And if we can get through that and, and bring back their securities and stuff and work through them and mistakes they made that they're not beating each other up, they'll make great, you know, great soul winners because they can use their situation as they overcome in a great way. And I love to be there for people that, you know, that are, I, I take hard crowds. I admit it, but I, there's the ones that my heart reaches out. I love them. I love people that are struggling, you know, and it don't matter what your struggle is. I'm just like, I'm here. I love you guys, you know, and that's what it's about. So let me see what else we got here. Um, Man, I'm glad you're did. interacting, but too, huh? What was that, Mike? I said, if you think about it, that's what Jesus did too. He didn't hang around with the richy rich folks. He hung around with the 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 people that needed a lot of work. You know, the perfect. Mm -hmm. And he didn't have nothing to do with those. He, he always dealt with the imperfected. And I was like, what's wrong with me, God? The the harder case they are, the more I just love them. I can't help myself, mm -hmm. and I do. I just love people like that. You know, but when I see them coming out, wow, are they soul winners? You know, they just got to have that confidence back in themselves. Yep. So um, now also a good way to, you know, we, we encourage by <clears throat> resisting the sin of this world. We talked about that righteously and diminishing the appetite for God is that that's what happens when you live in sin. You, you're, and we don't want that. We don't want our appetite for God to be diminished. Um, and we need to encourage and feed others through service and, and, message you know messages which we've been talking about all that you know so to receive is to give away and you can find that in a good example for that is in Luke 638 Mike Luke 638 okay just a minute oh you're skipping way ahead of me here okay <laughs> right, that's okay I'll let you know when I need the verse okay uh, it says, give it shall be, oh, give it and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom or with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Isn't that beautiful? So when you, so you you can give testimony, say, I am blessed. 
There's a reason for that through this Bible verse. The more you give, it just automatically comes back. That's not why we do it. We do it because we love God and we want to please him, right? And be more like him and less like ourselves. But God promises blessings will overcome when you're in his will. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's wonderful to be in his will. There's just, you know, it, not only that, I find that I grow more when I get the more I stay hungry. I grow a lot more. So that's why I encourage, you know, when I'm talking about this subject, because you will see such a growth as you draw closer to daddy, you know, as I'm calling him, you know, and that it's beautiful to see that when I see people getting that hunger and I try to encourage it is because I see the growth and it's beautiful. And also behind every good leader, there's always people that are learning and growing. That's a good sign of a good leader. She, you know, pastor's a good leader. She teaches us a lot. You teach a lot. People that I come to and I counsel, you know, I see them grow. And that makes me feel good because I know God is doing, working through me like it needs to be. Because I see it in the people that come to me. You know, and that's what it's about, you know. It's just like your love and joy for each other just doesn't go away. You keep in touch, you pray and, and you, you know, can give testimonies and you, you know, when you're having a bad day, a good thing comes up and you just want to share, you know, like, and I love that, you know, I love like Patty shares her arts and crafts. She's very artsy and crafty and, you know, and, and that's a blessing. It might seem like a little thing to her, but it's a blessing to me. You know, I get, excited and I like to see her smile while she's making her stuff and sharing it's just really neat we all have something that we can contribute and you can even use that as a testimony that's why I brought it up that's a good testimony yes Plus, both of us are artsy too so that helps <laughs> yeah we love that we're artsy too well, we are we are very artsy <laughs> go ahead Eddie like, like the old saying goes if you want to get love give love if you want to get respect give respect if you want to give and receive honor give honor where honors do you want to give bless get blessings give blessings you want to get so much in your life like the word of god share the word and god will give you more of the word you you want to get more of the spirit of god give out the spirit and god will fill you more with the spirit you want to give get holiness Live holy and share holiness with other people, and then be holy unto God. Whatever we give, what measure we give, is what we get back from God. So what you give out is what you're going to receive. If you put out bitterness, anger, resentment, that's what you're going to get back in your life. Disrespect, that's what you're going to get back. But you give the attributes of God and what he says the, the, the fruits of the Spirit is, you'll receive what the fruit of the Spirit is back in your life as you give it. Yeah, I still have a little more to go, but that's just a very good summary for this, honestly. Because yeah. when you're hungry, you have more to give, don't you? When you're hungry for God, you have more to be hungry to give. But if you close that off and that relationship, guess what happens? You start to starve spiritually and you don't have anything to give. So, yeah, that's just, it's a, I got goosebumps. That was just a beautiful expression of what I'm talking about. So, thank you so much. Um, you do have to close pretty soon, no, Joanne. It's like uh, twenty-nine or something. Eight thirty-four. Okay, I don't have too much more to go. Um, um, and I, I think I gave you Luke six thirty-eight, right, Mike? When you uh, said I was telling you, I think that was the one you read. I'm pretty sure. Six. Lost one of them, I think. That's the one on encouraging and feeding others through service and missions. Well, okay, you might need to read that. But, yeah, we do have – what are ways we can demonstrate our hunger for God is, like you said, we do. And we all have talents to do differently. I mean, I've worked with the homeless. I We've saved money for socks or we fed them. And, there's a, and it was joyful for me, actually, because mm -hmm. when – you see how grateful they are. And here I think we take things for granted a lot in America. But overseas it's different. But that was on uh, Luke 638, Fox. Okay. Uh, Luke 638. Give and it will be given unto you good measure. Oh, yeah. We just read that. That's what I thought. Okay. So we can learn types of encouragement. 
to encourage others to develop a hunger for him. And that's how I'm going to sum it up, how we can develop a hunger for him. So this is easy. Um, be an example, which we talked about. Do it together. Make ourselves accountable to others. We talked about that. Praise God. Um, focus on the positive. Criticism destroys desire to work for him and to draw closer. So we, like we're doing now, keep that up, y'all. Encourage the positive in each other because all of us have positive points. All of us have strength. I think Sheila's an excellent leader, even though she's not yet a pastor, but she makes a good leader. That's a strength, Sheila. I don't know mm -hmm. if you hear it. Yeah, that's a strength. And we can learn from each other. We can bootleg off of each other that way. You know, we can, even if we just meet and say, you know, hey, you know, you've got this quality I like and talk about it. You know, what are examples and this and that, how we can use it, you know, to strengthen our growth in each other. That's very positive. You know what I mean? And I think, could you know, I think Kathy, I want to say your name right. You know, she's got some strength when she says, hey, you know, um, feel free to come to me if you want prayers. Well, she's been leaving. She left me a beautiful message as we text back and forth. And it was very encouraging. So thank you so much, Kathy. You know, I appreciated that. So I've got to wrap this up before we pray, too. Did, were you going to add something? I want to make sure I didn't. Miss anything, Eddie? Did you have something, Dad? Just that it, it, it's like this here. If you're going to invite, uh, say, sixty people over your house, and you make a big spread, you make a big meal for for all these sixty people, you better invite sixty people over to your house. You're not going to make a big meal for a big spread and not invite somebody over. It's the same with God and the church and the ministry. Invite people to church so they can be fed. They're hunger and they're thirsting after stuff. The Bible says that if, if we don't preach the word, they're going to go to places that are, are trying to preach the word, but there's just a tickling of the ears. And they're going to be led astray by the tickling of the ears, right? We need to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and the message of Jesus Christ for them to come and be filled with Christ. Not tickling their ears, not giving them false teaching, but the teachings of Christ the proper teachings and the love of God and help them to grow. So in the day of trial, when tribulation comes, they're able to stand. When, when you're sick in the hospital, you're able to stand. You don't give up. You don't throw in the towel. You keep on going. When you're going through a struggle or something going on, you seek God so that you can get over your problems or your situation and God will help you. Just because there's a mountain in front of you doesn't mean that you have to cast the mountain out of the way. She said, this mountain be thou removed, right? Sometimes we have to climb that mountain to get to the top. Sometimes we need that valley experience to grow in Christ. And we need to seek and hunger after Christ and his righteousness because that's the important thing. We won't be filled if we don't seek. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anybody opened it, I will come in and sup with you. And he wants to stop with us. So we just need to open the door and let him in. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage everybody, if you do for others, do it with the spirit of excellence. Because God does. So yeah. if you're going to give clothes away, don't get ratted ones with holes and, you know, that clothes, the knees all work. Give them your best. You know what I'm saying? So, and, and it's the same thing when you talked about meals. I know when I prepare meals, I prepare way more than I need so they can take it home. That makes me happy that they like it and they want to take it home, you know? So everybody gets blessings that way. So always try to do things with your best, you know? And I think the last one I've got on here is give all praise and glory to God. It's always about him. So that's the most important way to wrap this up. We need to be better, good disciples. We've got to be hungry for God. Therefore, we got to, we have to represent God. We have to work, work with God and be more like God. And we have to be very thankful in all that we do and all that God does for us to keep thankful. So I know Mary sometimes likes to add a little bit and she's been kind of quiet. Is she still in here? Because I don't see her. No. No. Okay, does anybody have anything else to add? Because that's the end of my lesson. Yeah, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good 
and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. And always renew your heart. Mm -hmm. Check with your heart, too. Make sure you're always in the right place. Yes, Karen? I also want to say thank you to Pastor Debbie for being exactly who she is and for being a great leader and for taking your time, Pastor Debbie, um, in helping each and every single one of us through through the ministry, through life's journeys. And you are just, you are my heart and I love you so much. Amen. And I thank you. Amen. All of us feel that way. And also, Eddie, you're a great leader. Yes. So thank you so much with what we've learned from you and the time you give of yourself. And your, your other verse, Joanne, that you hadn't got to yet was um, Second Timothy 13, uh, 3, 16 through 17 is all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for, repair, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. I want to add something to that. So I'm glad you remembered that. Um, let's try to make a good balance in, 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 as we learn and grow with each other. Let's try to help each other be accountable. Let's try showing more love. Let's try being more into the word because that's how we get closer with him. Um, worship when you praise him. Give him your best. You know, and continue to talk to him through your day. Because, like, you know, we want answers, but we got to do our part, amen. We have to be seeking him for the right reasons because we truly love him. And he, everything else will fall in place. Yes, Eddie? Wait, can you read the scripture that you read before that one? Just quickly. Uh, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, that was. Uh, uh, I believe that was Romans one, uh, 12. 12. Yeah. Hmm. Be not conformed of, to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Thank yeah. you. The part about renewing the mind. I understand the best way to renew your mind is through the washing of the water of the word of God. You want to renew your mind. You want to cleanse your mind. Study the word of God. Because it says study. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're muted. Eddie, you're coming out really muffled. You're muted. You're muted, Eddie. I, I didn't hear you. I will say, though, that um, I pray that God will saturate me with his word. I want to breathe. I want it to come in out of my pores. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I like to be reminded of the word. We need that. Yeah. I didn't hear you, Eddie. You got in. You went. Sorry. It's like we need to have our minds washed by the washing of the word of God, the water of the word of God. You know, it says to renew our mind daily and through the washing of the word. We get in the word. We study the word of God because it, it helps us to understand the word of God and it helps us to prove the word of God. Amen. Thank you guys for the ones that are comfortable to come to me. I love you all. Yes, Karen. I just um, I ask for you all to pray this, that that hopefully my labs look good today enough for me to go home tomorrow. I know it's God's timing, but I really want to go home. So if y'all could just pray that the labs and everything are looking good and I can get to go home. Eddie, do you mind if I ask you to pray and close this out? Sure. Let me take off my hat. Thank you. Oh, wait. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Pastor. I just was going to ask you to pray. Um, we have a few people interested in coming um Onto our in with our ministry, and uh, one is Harry, and Harry was uh, one of the young men that I was a spiritual mother for in Ghana. He's just met up with Timothy now on the phone, and they're going to get together. He's a professional photographer. He's going to go up to where Timothy is, and he's going to take some professional pictures and videos and everything. 
for our uh, like of our kids, like to let people see them really good pictures. Um, so he's going to come in as a Christian worker. He's just going to be taking his um, classes now. Um, then we have some people from other ministries are very dissatisfied with the ministries that they're under because some of the ministries are not following God's word. And um, so uh, one person is Pastor Jeff Joyce. He was on uh, with us on Sunday, and I welcomed him. Um, and uh, he was our youth pastor many, many, many years ago. So he is going to be praying about it, and I'm going to be having a Zoom meeting with him, as well as another couple, and the gentleman's name is also Jeff, and he's also an ordained minister through this other ministry that's having some big issues. So they heard good stuff about our ministry, and they're contemplating coming on as uh, ministers with us. So if you can pray, that's why I was interrupting, if you could pray for them. So for Peter, uh, I mean, Harry, um, and the two Jeffs, both of their names are Jeff. Okay, thank you. I also want to say thank you to Timothy and Mary because um, I know they have ministries too that people may not realize because they're not here in the U.S. So I want to thank them for their work that they put into. I appreciate Amen. them. Amen. Anybody else have anything to pray for before you start? Let me make sure. Everything's covered. Okay. Dear Lord God, we thank you for this wonderful evening that we had, Lord God. We just ask you, Lord God, that we take the word that was brought forth, Lord God, in the ministry, Lord, that we apply it to our lives and live it out daily, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to be good stewards of your word, good stewards of the ministry, Lord God. And talking about the good stewards of the ministry, Lord God, we pray for those that are coming aboard to this ministry, Lord Jesus, to be part of this ministry, Lord God. We thank you for the gifts and the talents that you're giving to this ministry, helping this ministry to grow for you, Lord God, not for ourselves, but for you, Lord God, and for the ministry, that we can reach many for you, Lord God, and bring many to Christ to know the love of Jesus Christ. So, Lord God, we pray for Karen, too, that she, you know, if it be your will, Lord God, that she go home tomorrow, Lord God. We pray that the results will be awesomely, perfectly, that she can go home, Lord Jesus, so we can rejoice with her as well at home, Lord God. Lord God, we pray for this ministry in many ways, Lord Jesus, for those that are part of this ministry. We thank you for each and every individual on here, Lord God, for the gifts and the talents that you've given here, Lord God, because you've given them the gifts. You've given them the talents. You've given them the calling that they have to come to minister for you, Lord God, with the gifts that you've given to them, Lord God. And we thank you for that, Lord God, and we appreciate everything you've done for us, Lord God, not only now but in the past, but also that you're going to do for us, Lord God. We thank you for the, how you're going to bless this ministry in a, in a mighty way, Lord God, to reach thousands and millions of people for you, Lord Jesus. Lord God, it's not our will, but that your will be done in our lives and in this ministry. And we thank you for that, Lord God. We thank you for our pastor, Lord God, which is a wonderful teacher and guidance to us and a mother in the Lord. Lord God, we thank you for the ministry that you've given to her, the calling you put upon her life and the anointing in her life, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for what you've done for us this day and continue to do it each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I love you all very much. Thanks for coming. Thank you for a Thanks beautiful for class. Here. God bless you all. Yes. You, uh, we will see you Sunday, if not sooner. Okay? Yep. Amen. God bless everybody. Um, you go home now. <laughs> <laughs>